how much you plead for your life. You I'm just laughing because <laughs> T-Max always yelling at you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He All must right. grow up around deaf people as well, right? There <laughs> <laughs> might be some information you need, but after a while, you're like, man, I, I don't want to hear this no more. Hey, everyone, support our Patreon, which helps us to continue bringing you our live streams, videos, and podcasts while bringing you new content, such as exclusive live streams and animated shorts. So, y'all, we know that, tragically, the great DMX... The Rough Rider himself, the dog, (sighs) passed away at the age of 50, leaving behind him a lot of loved ones and beloved fans. Everybody's sitting back, sort of giving him a tribute, and I decided to give him a tribute today by talking about the only DMX movie that I haven't seen, which is a movie called Belly. And... This came out in 1998, I believe. Mm -hmm. The reason why we didn't see it is because they did not give a screening for it. They didn't. And, yeah, I guess I'd only been (coughs) with you as far as the show for about a year at this point. Yeah. I remember people talking about it. I remember this is one of the first discussions I've had with one of the local critics in town who was pretty popular, Marge Bumgarten. And, uh, yeah, yeah, she was a real big critic here in town, worked for this thing called the Austin Chronicle. And she came out of this and said... Because I said, you did you see it? And I guess they sent, like, very special press. Because we weren't shit at the time. Right. <laughs> you fuck about well, us. Yeah, we were lucky to be on the list. <laughs> you goddamn thugs. <laughs> Nobody letting your black ass up here <laughs> to see this black ass <laughs> movie. <laughs> Full of thugs. <laughs> Full of thugs, yeah. But she came out and talking to a black person, she, she did not hold back. She said, oh, my God. This is one of the most awful movies I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, she was talking about this. She said, yeah, I, she, she pretty much ran it down for me. A lot of people seem to have that opinion, but also a lot of people seem to think that over the years, you know what, you crackers and you bougie Negroes, you just didn't get it. It speaks for the people out here. Mm. And it has now achieved, sort of like Super Mario Brothers, cult status. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so I guess if you get below 20% on Rotten Tomatoes, that gives you cult stuff. <laughs> <It gives you, laughs> well, you are in a very special club right yeah, there. Yeah, right. Yeah, something that a lot of people don't achieve. <laughs> <laughs> but Belly did. Nah, you tried too hard. You, <laughs> you don't no cult for you. Yeah, people. So, you know, now we got two ways of looking at this. How should this fall? Me having seen this, and I'm really interested to see what Martin means by this. Me kind of not having seen this. <laughs> not kind of, I have. I, I, I saw a little bit of it. I kind of seen it. He's like, I kind of not seen it. <laughs> Martin's one of them brothers where he's, they say, man, can you tell me an estimate of time you're going to be here? I'm pretty sure that I'll be there. I'm pretty sure 86.5% chance I'll be there. Well, y'all never let me forget that. <laughs> I laugh at that all the time. Martin, what's the chance you're going to be there? I'll be maybe 73.9% chance. I'll be Mar will tell you he'll be there like he's reading the weather. So. <laughs> I'm considerate. Yeah, no, you are. And I you try are. to be accurate. That is very accurate right there. So folks, with me having seen this at all, I got two ways of falling. Well, I fall into those people where, you know what? Well, I didn't see it years ago, but I get it seeing this. Well, what was wrong with people back then? This is actually pretty cool. Or will I think it's a bad movie like some other people? I know you love this movie. I mean, yeah, I've been watching it since I was like 14. Okay, well, that explains a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm the one. Yeah, okay. All right. yeah, I, said, I haven't even played the trailer yet. Set your ass down. <laughs> People, let's go ahead and take a look at this trailer. It's aged not very well, the trailer, because it's just. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm saying that because it's just, it, man, I learned that when you go back a, cer- a, a certain number of years, trailers just don't, they, they just don't look good. No, they don't. <laughs> they, the, the, like the, the pixelation is high, mm-hmm. the, you know, the bit rate is off, mm-hmm. so, you know. So it's not the best quality trailer, but it'll give you an idea of what it's about. Let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer for Belly, starring the great DMX and also the very much still alive and great hip hop legend Nas, directed by the legendary hip hop and music video director. What's his name? Hype Williams. Hype Williams. Back to jail, dog. Why well, is it like a Japanese film when all these dudes beat on them sticks? Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching Akira or something. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, ain't none of them sticks, ain't none of this this music, none of this music is in the in the movie. Yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know. Yeah, see how much you 
how much you bleed for your life. Do you laugh at this? Dmx always yelling at you. I know. He must have grew up around deaf people as well, right? It might be some information you need, but after a while, you're like, man, I, I don't want to hear this no more. I want to Yo, pass the sugar. I said, pass the sugar! Yo! <laughs> So if you know if you're a '90s person with hip hop, this is a R, even some R and B. You know this is this is cool right here for the casting. I can understand how a lot of people be allured by this. And I'm gonna tell you, now, Martin, explain to me how you almost didn't see this. Uh, what? What? <laughs> it's not that available. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you go to all the different stream, <laughs> streaming services, and it's not really there unless you want to rent it. And it's one of these things where okay, like. HBO Max, like you had HBO and Cinemax, so you figure, okay, HBO Max is HBO and Cinemax together. Yeah. It's not. Cinemax, <laughs> I was, but you were, you were like, it's not. Because <laughs> I kept seeing like, oh, it's on Cinemax. So I was like, well, I got HBO Max. That should be a part of it. And they're like, nah. Nah, yeah. nigga, if you want this, $10. <laughs> <I'm> like, $10? <laughs> Damn. Yes. Damn. What? It was $2.99 at my house. No, no. I mean, like to, to, to get a subscription to Cinemax, oh, you got to no. pay $10. Uh. So I'm looking online, and I was like, YouTube. Oh, somebody has broken it up into three-minute segments. <laughs> so I was just watching those three-minute segments. Going through, and then it hit that 11th segment, and I guess they just <laughs> stopped. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, though. As the movie goes on, you care less. In the beginning, you really care, and you're into it, and then it just falls apart. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? So here's the thing with this, man. So this if you hear nothing about this movie Belly, if you hear nothing at all, you definitely, especially back in the day, everybody talked about everybody talked about that opening scene. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and and you know what? The opening is great when it's not giving people seizures. <laughs> 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 you know, not, if you were epileptic, do not do not watch the open scene. <laughs> the goddamn flashing lights will have you swallow your tongue in a second. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and, and I'll tell you what, credit to Hype Williams for not being tempted into doing the one the one take tracking shot. Because that's what everybody did back in the day. Sure. You know, as, as, as much as he was trying to make this Goodfellas, he, he didn't do the one thing that everybody who wants to make a Goodfellas does. He, believe me, he did everything Goodfellas did except the one thing that's really <laughs> yeah. known for that, that tracking shot. Because everybody knows that tracking shot. I was like, God damn, nigga, you might as well just went ahead and did it. <laughs> right. did, did that too. You, you did everything else. <laughs> Everybody knows that shot right there, and believe me, this man is definitely trying to make a gangster hip hop Goodfellas. I'm surprised he just. I'm. I'm surprised he didn't just go ahead and do the one tracking shot that Goodfellas is known for. But this is, you know, this is pretty much a uh, 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 hip hop Goodfellas, gangster Goodfellas. And I tell you what, man, and and, and even with the opening shot, even with the uh, as cool as this opening shot is. Uh, it's a music video, you know. Or they're getting ready to go play laser tag. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or ascend to the heavens. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> the mothership has docked. <laughs> Mother, like they playing Tron right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> it is a cool opening, and it's a very expensive opening. Uh, our very expensive music video. Because most of the movie budget went to that opening music video. <laughs> Did you read this? Because I know you've been, I appreciate you, man. I love that you've been reading up on things. Did you read about this? I, I didn't read what you're about to say. No, they, the movie has a budget of $3 million. And I read it. Might oh, be wrong. it was all right there. All, <laughs> As the camera panned across. Yeah, that, all that money you see. And I think they had about, I think they had like the, the $50 to film the rest of the movie. But <laughs> that they didn't have enough money to finish the script. Why is it expensive? It's just a fucking strobe light. Uh, I, maybe they maybe they spent a lot of money on strobe lights. <laughs> yeah, getting everybody in there. They, you know what? They might he might have tried to do the tracking shot and it just didn't work they out. They do have a tracking shot in the movie when he walks into the Jamaican's house. Yeah, you know what he does, but even they broke that up. Mm. They did break that up. I, I, you, but good observation though. 
tell you watch this a lot. Yeah, people, they didn't even have enough money to finish the, you know, it, to finish it, the script. <laughs> it, it, it was probably one of these things where they thought, we'll get the money. It'll come. Some people promised us. Yeah, and that and, money and it just never, never showed up. That money was out drinking and getting high like the rest of the cast. The rest of the cast showed up. They, they said the rest, they had problems with the cast showing up late and drunk yeah. every day. Yeah, <laughs> every I, day. I mean, like I said, I only saw a third of it, but I'm not yeah. shocked. It's so funny that you say that because when I was watching it the other night, I was looking at DMX's house. And back when I was little, like when I was like 15, 16 watching it, I'd be like, oh my God, it's so nice. And now I'm like, that house is kind of dusty, crusty, like oh, Ikea yeah. shit. But like, is that the, even a kitchen? What the fuck is the Back sink? in the day, because they shot a lot of places. They, rent, they went to a lot of houses and shot but the you know that's the brought locations and strobe lights is what they had the money for because after this opening right here after this opening is done it's almost like this there's no story after that yeah i mean like i said i haven't seen enough to really you know talk to the whole thing but what i saw it reminded me of when you're a kid and you put on like your dad's hat and coat and you guys go out and play gangsters with each yeah. other. And it, it just felt like that. Like they got a bunch of these dudes together and they say like, just pretend like you're gangsters and, and talk like that. People, this ain't got no story. Ain't got no fucking story at all. It has scenes that connect to each other. This shit is everywhere. Yeah. This shit is everywhere. <laughs> Somebody could have easily gone outside and just threw the script up in the fucking air and let that shit go to the wind. <laughs> so, ain't no, ain't no fucking. If they had us, if they had a script, we didn't oh. see it. People for for one, they spend twenty minutes of the movie. The first twenty minutes, I'm not bullshitting. The first twenty of the movie, they spend introducing characters. <laughs> They spend so much time introducing motherfuckers in here and none of them really have anything to do. I'm just going to tell you that right now. None of these characters have anything to fucking do. <laughs> they don't have any. Maybe because most of the movies spent time with them just yelling at each other. They do a big do a big bust and then and they get in the car and all of them just like, yeah, nigga, we don't been this my head. Fuck you, man. You may get the fuck out of the car. And I'm like, God damn, man. Why are they all friends? <laughs> What you're reading books for. Yeah. Books ain't never helped you. But Man. isn't that how it should be if they're like doing all these busts? Like they're not supposed to be good quality human beings having intellectual conversations. Well, like they just stole some shit. Like what? if their their parts are raised. You don't have to look, you can be a villainous ass person, but even villains stop to have conversation. No. <laughs> okay. And the two dudes just shooting each other in the restaurant. Man. Man, you They're know, supposed I'm, to be cold blooded gangsters fools. Like what? Why am I the only I'm, one defending this movie right now? Those, those, those are cartoon <laughs> dudes. Do, do these do these motherfuckers just shoot up testosterone? Cause they, 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 they spend this movie yelling, they got their shirts off, they talking about bitches all the time, fuck you nigga and all that. What and I constantly, constantly talking shit to each other, man. Why would anybody be friends with these guys? Cause all they do, cause you know, I'm, it's so crazy, all the testosterone that's going around with these fucking dudes, man. I wonder if, that, if they're overcompensating for their gayness. You ever notice the more people act tough, the more they act, they act gangster, the closer they get to fucking another dude, or at least getting another dude naked, for no reason. Yeah. There's always, it was like they always find a, they always find an excuse. Take your clothes off, bitch. Strip, bitch. I'm like, what the fuck does that accomplish at all? They got a dude in here. Corey, oh it's God. not breaking you down. Uh, you ain't got to break nobody. It's, you could psychologically break somebody down without asking them to pull that dick out. They, they got a dude in here. <laughs> hey, man, you have your methods. They have theirs. They, then they can keep them. They got a dude. They just This dude was so confused. He just on the couch just shaking his shit. Count that money, man. <laughs> Count that fucking money, man. Right, you, you gonna get yours, B. You gonna get yours, man. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker, he's traumatized. You like y'all had to do this to me. <laughs> Shit, I could learn a lesson many other ways. <laughs> you don't think there's like a hierarchy and like a constant need for power, like where they're not like thinking clearly because they're so psychotic. Oh, they thinking clearly enough to do to strip his clothes off. It ain't like that's a spur of the moment decision. I don't know. They even sitting around talking to each other, talking about. It. I mean, it's just weird shit, and they're like, "Yeah, hey, you know, brother, I knew you. Be, I knew you'd be back on my dick." It's like, what did your dick have to do with anything with this conversation at all? Peep, how that flow come in? You know what I'm saying? Bet you jump back on my dick. <laughs> I'd be like, wait, what? What? <laughs> wait, huh? wait, stop the car. Yeah. What, what, why? Yeah. You know, we could have. I could have been back. I could have been back on your level. I could have been back. You know, I could have. I could have been kissing your ass. Why well, I got to be on your dick right now? 
These dudes, it's just, it's just funny, man, looking at that. I can even, because that, cause that scene with your boy right here, because I'm not going to act like I'm above it. That shit had me laughing. That scene where they had that dude on the couch. Hey, oh, shit. You're going to get yours, B. you going to get yours, man. <laughs> He's swerving. I laughed at that. I'm not, I'm not even going against that. There's some funny stuff in there. That's, that's more of an observation. That's more of a funny thing to me. It's just, I'm going to tell you something right now. It's probably not a good time for me to watch this. It's probably, not, it's probably a bad time for me to watch this because I'm just not feeling these kind of joints these days, man. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a problem I had with what I saw here is like this is the kind of movie people watch and think cops are justified when they kill black people. Cause yeah. It, it's, it's that feeling like, oh, well, yeah, this is how they live because they're so casual about it. Yeah, people. You know, this, people, this, this is black stereotype, the movie. This is a gangster soul plane. To be to be to be to be straight up with you, man. To be honest, uh, you know, this is at that point in Hollywood where, you know, with gangster films, they weren't message movies anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, they weren't cautionary tales. You know, they they were they were exploitation mm-hmm. at this point. You know, sim similar to the struggle movies that we have now. You know, I don't know how y'all can talk about struggle movies today. How they, you know, black people, man. Why we got to be in a struggle? Why we have to like, why, why is there always violence against our bodies? Why are we always being violated against, traumatized? This is the same shit. It doesn't make it any better when black people do it to each other. You know, is that only, does that only apply when, when there's, you know, racists out there doing it? Nah, people, this is exploitation of ourselves, to be honest with you. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of people blowing me back on this, man. Probably wrong can, choice can of words. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, can, can I blow you back? Can I blow you back on that one, please? <laughs> <laughs> they like you like your hair. <laughs> they say you like your boy on the couch over here. <laughs> you gonna get yours, B. You gonna get yours, B. <laughs> man, y'all gonna get yours, man. Leave me alone, man. <laughs> Don't no get yours, man. What's up? There's a whole lot of things that go on in this movie that would have never flown in 2021. A lot. I think if you're going to do a retro review, it's not fair for you to do it like uh, looking at it from 2021. Of course, it's not going to be okay now. It's been freaking 19 years. Yeah. Let, let's pretend we're in 1998 and we're reviewing the movie. In 1998, I wouldn't like this shit. I'm telling you for a lot of reasons. Because this came out at the time when these these exploitation gangster films were actually getting on my fucking nerves. Yeah, they, they'd be kind of been oversaturated at this point. Every scene in this movie is connected by drugs, guns, hoes, snitches, jail. Constantly shooting ourselves. Oh my Constantly God. shooting yeah. ourselves. Yeah. I had a dream somebody was killing me when I watched it the other day. <laughs> That's just I was like, yeah, it traumatized your ass. Because you, you see it happen over and over. Yeah. Like I said, that, that one of the last things I saw was the scene with DMX and those two young dudes in the restaurant oh. with guns on each other. People, yeah. there's a, there's that, was, a, that was, I mean, it was hilarious except that Wow, this is so messed up. The, people, there's, they're, they're, they got to the point where there are so many guns that dudes couldn't even have nice dinner conversations. Couldn't have a nice dinner. <laughs> the nice dinner chit chat without pulling their guns out. Real shit, now what? Try to shut them the fuck up. Oh, I say, this is my retort. Honestly, <laughs> that, was, that was like one of those Muppet Wilkins <laughs> coffee commercials. Yeah, yeah people, <laughs> it, 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 it got to the point where so many guns. In this movie, that they pretty much had a, a gun dick measuring contest. Not only that, I mean, like most people get up and leave the restaurant because <laughs> they see the guns come out. But after this shooting, DMX just finishes his drink. Well, they they explain why, even though it don't make any sense. To be honest with you, they they, they attempt to explain to explain more in that scene than they did in other scenes. At that point, you know, you know a little bit of spoiler. They 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 had like they have narration going the whole thing. It was uh, D, uh they uh, Nas explained that DMX had just. He just had enough of that life, even though there was no indication in his character that he had had enough of that life. You don't think that it makes sense that it's a constant power struggle when you have this mindset where you're slinging heroin and you got all these horrible, violent people around you? Like, it's you constantly that, have to show who's boss. But that's what, again, this is what Hollywood was, was defining us as. Like, they define us as slaves now and struggling. They define us by this gangster shit. Back in the day, they couldn't give us no money to make a fucking good Black Panther movie. Believe me, Wesley Snipes tried, but they give you like they give some pocket change to go out and show each, show us shooting each other. You know, it's so stereo, it's so stereotypical, y'all, that they even got yet. 
Niggas don't read books. Yeah, I know. In the meantime, get money. Fuck a book, man. <laughs> okay. All right. You know. And then it's going to be one of these movies. And you didn't see this part. It's going to be one of the movies after we relish in this. You know, pretty much fetishize uh, this, this whole gangster thing. It's going to turn around and literally preach to us. There's a scene with a preacher. Telling somebody, turn your life around, brother. What about the black community? Yeah, what about the black community when you were making this shit? You know, it's, you know, I, I, it's a, you know, they're gonna turn around, put the, and then put the fucking like the, uh, put the burden on you. But what we gonna do about the black community? I don't know. Go watch this. <laughs> How about don't make the movie? <laughs> I mean, it's so stylistic to the point that it's silly because you don't even. Because as long as it looks good, it don't matter if it's, if, it, if it's logical. I got a scene, you probably saw it earlier, I got a scene where this chick got, got out of bed. She talking about, I'm trying to get some sleep. Tell me what is going on and why y'all making so much noise? It's these niggas right here. I told niggas shut the fuck up. Sorry, Chief, baby, that's my fault. I am trying to sleep. In full makeup. <laughs> <laughs> your your pillow must like a coloring book when you wake <laughs> up. And for it don't make no sense. It gets to the point. It's so he he's, he gets so into the style that the shit just kind is kind of going crazy <laughs> because it's just like it gets so into style that two scenes are just kind of just mutating and and and, and just and just like and, and like crossing over into each other. Girl, no, Coleman. I've been planning this for a minute. You know what I'm saying? I got I got the spot out of town. Girl, it's it's like, did you just get stuck trying to do a cross design? <laughs> Can I explain that? Can I, I, I thought I need to put glasses on. <laughs> That's right. What's up? So many of these scenes, a lot of these scenes, they film it in a way that it makes you uh, experience the perspective of the actor or actress that's going through that exact scene. I don't know if you ever smoked hella weed with somebody who's trying to get you to listen to them about a business deal, but when you got one guy in your ear and you're trying to watch a soccer game and you're 10 blunts deep, that's what you feel. That's what you experience. That's what the theme is throughout the movie. You're sh they're, they're displaying what that character is going through from their perspective, what they're hearing, what they're seeing, what they're feeling. I would agree with you. And I, and I was about to say, that's a that's a really cool uh, 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 perspective on that. I really thought that was cool, except that is it is not from, because this is a scene where DMX goes to see a Jamaican guy to help him uh, bankroll his his drug business, except it's DMX who's really who we're really following, whose perspective is there. We're not really supposed to be having it the perspective of the Jamaican dude. But he's smoking and he's got the soccer game on, and maybe in this scene you are supposed to have the perspective of the Jamaican dude because in the other scenes you're having the perspective of other people too it's not just DMX and I think that's I, all over the place I, it I, is all I, over the place I, I gotta <laughs> say that when I saw that scene I, I thought like she did yeah well I think it's sloppy because DMX is the guy that's we're, we're following he's his, his, his perspective so why are we getting the perspective of this fucking Jamaican well, we, here we, we seem to get like you said introduced to so many different characters and I know DMX is the main guy but suddenly we got this new guy, and it was just interesting to see how his personality was way different than everybody else's. Yeah, M more chill, but more like a, I'm I'm just as interested in this soccer game as I am in what you're saying. And I, I, I kind of at the end of the day, let me just stop here and say, fuck y'all. If you say I'm sorry, I don't mean to be dis I don't mean to be disrespectful, but Danielle's the voice of black people. If you really mean that, fuck you. I'm not the no, voice of black you. people. No, fuck you. No, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. If you think that, so a fucking white girl here that loves black stereotypes and shit. But Danielle, I'm sorry to like put you on blast right here, but that's what you meant. This is why you can't. Is because the other day I said, you know what? You like stereotypical black dudes because you like I can't keep a man. You like fucking. Dudes. I never said I can't keep a man. You or, no, you didn't say I can't keep a man. No, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did you say I don't know why guys don't love me and shit. You know, I can't. I can't keep a guy. When did I, I ever You said. You said. You said the guys that I that that I like don't want me, and the guys that I want me, I don't like. Right, completely and, different topic. Yeah, I'm and, not representing or trying to talk for black people at all. No, I, I don't. I don't put up with that kind of shit where y'all like because somebody talks about some stereotypical shit that's mainstream. Oh, they the voice of black people. No, fuck off if that's what you think. I'm not putting up with that shit. And one thing, one thing, when this movie came out, I was like 13, so I wasn't a seasoned film critic that really knew what the fuck they were talking about. To me, it was cool listening to the music with the art direction while the shit was on a big screen while I was smoking weed with my friends. That's it. Like, I wasn't really thinking, oh, this is fucked up that they're painting black people this way because it was the first movie, you know what I mean? Like, I hadn't seen all the shit that was yeah, going on in every, Hollywood. And everybody's and it young, nobody thinks like And it that. wasn't that deep for me and I hear your perspective and I agree with yeah. you. Black people should not be painted in this light and it's 
10 times worse now, 100%. But for me, just in a high, at a party, smoking weed, you know, drinking beers, this shit would be on a big old flat screen and we thought it was cool with T-Bods and Nas and Method Man and DMX. This is the shit we were listening to on the radio. Like, it wasn't that deep for us. DMX, like, hooking up with that 16-year-old was way out of line. That shit yeah, would never fly that now. that whole pedophile thing going on there. I mean, was she really, there was a scene in here with DMX he gets caught with this girl, and this girl, she says, I'm 16. Was she really 16, or was she just saying that? I mean, I would think she wasn't, but then you do have that little kid in here cussing his ass off. Well, they mentioned yeah. DMX mm. knows her age, because she says, hmm. I'm 16. Tommy said we couldn't fuck yet, but I did suck his dick you, the night before last. Right. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, they know what it is. But back then, 14-year-olds, yeah. yeah. 30-year-olds, I mean, it didn't fucking matter. Yeah. No, nah, look, I, if you like it, I mean, I ain't going to tell you how to feel. I ain't going to sit up here and, like, put you in the corner and, you know, say, how dare you. But, you know, I know I was just getting up to somebody saying, I don't play that shit when everybody's like, oh, that's the voice of the black community because they no. said what I like. No, fuck you for that. It's, that's what's wrong with things. Yeah, um, yeah, and I don't want that ever. I am not the voice of the black community. I am Danielle, and half the time I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about anyway, so. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't even talking to you. I, even, I mean, I was talking about you. I'm just saying, you know, don't sit up here and let somebody because they said something that, oh, the, this the this is what's cool for black people, so she's right. No, I don't. Listen, maybe I'm a little because that's like I said, man. I people picking, you know, they cherry pick what they think is cool for us and what they don't. You know, a lot of people grew up with this and like, oh man, fuck you, this movie's good. Well, how is it? I'm just going to ask you a question. I'm just going to ask you a straight up question. How is how how is this? How is how is this victimization any different from the struggle movies that we have now? It doesn't portray anything in a positive light. It's not all that good, really, when it's with, with, his, with his story. Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, like I said, I'm just not into this kind of thing today. It's, it's you're burnt out, and I don't blame yeah. you. But if you were 16 and you know hadn't seen a bunch of this shit, and you know you would have been jamming out. How many? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I listen. Like I said, I I can't tell people what to like, and people like it. Then that's that's their deal. I'm just explaining why I didn't like it, but I will say this much. I did enjoy DMX in it. Yeah, I feel like I see him as this character and everything I see him. Yeah, I don't want to ask you a question. Somebody said you're being too harsh on the movie. How am I being too fucking harsh on the movie? I should get some of you motherfuckers on the phone and talk to you. Corey because no, to because everybody talk about yeah. because when you put it out there, because this is how we do, man. It's like, oh my God, all these struggle movies. Yeah, I can't stand that. Man, they making us look bad. They doing this. And now this shit right here, and it's like, oh man, but man, that's a classic right there. Fuck off. You know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to hear that shit from people, man. You know, we, we, you know, this, again, we cherry pick what we fucking like until it, you know, we, oh, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. Oh, oh, man, but I grew up on that shit right there. Oh, man, that's my, I ain't being too fucking harsh on this. You ain't being harsh enough. Fuck off. This movie's bullshit and it makes us look bad. But DMX was good in the movie, man. I, I'll say that. Nas, I love Nas, but Nas sounded sleepy through this shit. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> DMX has presence. That's the thing about DMX, man. DMX, no matter what you said, DMX always had presence, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. DMX always had. You know, he was larger than life, everything he did. In this movie, I will tell you this, man. I feel like, I feel, this made me, this made me feel even worse about DMX because I was thinking like, man, if DMX hadn't been distracted in his life, he could have achieved a whole lot. Like Ice Cube or something? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think he could have, yeah, I, I think he could have, you know, kind of, I mean, look, would he have been he, the he, greatest actor out there? No, I don't know. He could have been an F9. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah he, you know what? He could have. He could have been Tyrese. Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't be screaming the whole time. Barking and shit. <laughs> Barking. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, you know, but I don't know. Yeah, this movie set me off a little bit, man, because I just, I just. You picked it. I know, I know I did. <laughs> well, you know, it was, it was. It was recommended and listen, y'all. It ain't, it ain't that serious. It ain't that fucking serious, you know. But I just, I don't know, man. Like I said, I it wouldn't just, fly now in 2021 for sure. But in 1980, I know you said they had already done this, where you know it was painting African American people in not the best light. But I don't think it was as beat to the ground as it is now in 21. Yeah, no, it's just. I mean, it is what it is, and exists. It's out there. Some people like it, and you know they grew up on it, like they, like they said, and that's that's fine. I just happened to catch it. And I'll, I'll agree with you on this, Daniel. I just happened to catch it when I, I can tell you, I don't, I wouldn't have liked it when, when I saw it at the time. I would not have liked this at all. But uh, it definitely is not my thing today. 
I, and I and I feel, you know, and I feel bad because this is something I wanted to like review and tribute to DMX, and it's just something that I just I I really did not like this at all, man. You know, I have I I've, I've had to watch this after seeing something like them. Mm-hmm. Where that was nothing but abuse against black yeah. bodies, yeah. and I don't want to watch this shit where we are killing each other every fucking five minutes, man. That's how this movie is defined. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear you on that one. For and, it's, sure. and you know, and I don't want to, you know, that's fine. You know, if you like it, that's cool. I'm not going to tell you what. I'm not going to tell you why you shouldn't like it. Don't or, or why you why I'm not going to tell you why you shouldn't like it or should like it. And don't do the same thing to me. I just, you know, I can't tell anybody what to do. But this is bullshit to me. This is straight up bullshit. And even I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give this movie another compliment. They say that 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 they ran out of money with the opening. Well, if they did, my man still he made the movie still look good with the remaining budget. Yeah. A lot of people making fun of it for like run out of money in the beginning, but well, you know, with that fifty dollars they had left, they they made this. It still looked like a good movie. And I'm gonna tell you something else, man. He's good with the he's good with a lot of people. There's a lot of stuff in this movie that I thought was. Uh, that I thought was uh, uh, not all of it. Not all the people were good. A lot of people were high, as, as they said during this movie. But uh, that Jamaican right there, if you can see through all the haze, right there, that, he's badass. I thought that dude was cool. Yeah. They got a Jamaican guy. I don't know. His, I don't know if he's a. I would tell. You, I don't know if he's popular or not. If he's if he's somebody, but he felt natural. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that guy a lot. And I liked how DMX was like nervous around him, and he's just like, "I'm hungry, man. I'm hungry." Like DMX was the top dog in all the different and all the other scenes, but with him, you could tell that DMX was like, kind of like, "Just give me a chance, man." You know. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of cool scenes in this. I just wish that they connected. You know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, even without all this stuff that I found somewhat offensive or that triggered me on or whatever, it was still. It just the story was just not very strong. I don't think. You know, I just I couldn't really, I couldn't really tell what was going on. It's just vignettes gangster vignettes going th- going on here but you know I, like I said I don't know man go ahead <laughs> you wanna get uh, his three minute YouTube yeah, clips it's, over it's, and over yeah. there's more air in the room uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the cast it's got the music it's got the art direction it's got that I mean the movie can't have every fucking thing I'll tell you what they ran out of money so much that they that I think they, was, they couldn't even like get stock footage of Africa at the end, they did, well, at some point, we <laughs> oh, talked oh, about they going. Up, they end up in Africa. They say. <laughs> oh, okay. They say there's a scene where somebody says, "Boy, Africa." That's their dream. Blue, That's Sincere's dream. No, they like they say, "Man, I'm glad I'm here in Africa. Blue skies, wonderful people, and they still showing Brooklyn." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? They no, man, in my line. Now, come on. <laughs> they because I said, man, y'all couldn't even get no stock footage of lines or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. No, no, like I said, like, <laughs> I haven't seen enough to really come down on it. Uh, what I can say is, like, the longer it was going on, like, once you get past the Jamaican dude, it was just seeming a lot more cheap. And I, I, I yeah, just so many characters, I was having trouble Following. attaching myself to any of them or to even what was going on. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it just looked like. Like some kids trying to make a, a good fellas. <laughs> as far as the movie, I, I tend to get turned off by movies where everybody just has tough guy dialogue. Yeah, I was like, man, y'all barking at each other, but you ain't really saying anything. <laughs> barking at each other, man. <laughs> Watching it, I realized that I'd seen the first hour like a bazillion times, but the ending, I'm like. How have I not seen this ending? I don't understand it. I get to tell you the whole movie except the ending. Think about it. Every you say every time you watch this, you were getting high. True. So you hit a point mm-hmm. <laughs> where you zoned out before it ever. You gets can't there. watch it and not have one of those like <laughs> soggy, thick ass, too long blunts where the weed is falling out and you're like drooling all over it. See, that's where you messed up. Yeah, man. you got. I just went high enough. <laughs> Maybe and not stare and not stereotypical enough. <laughs> Well, come on, you know I got because that's the only thing I don't like about certain white girls who like black men. I, you love you love black stereotypes, don't you? No, I don't. I'm actually here for fuck those stereotypes altogether. Yeah, like I'm do. not here for them at all. <laughs> oh, that was cheap. I know that was that was cheap. No, that was cheap. That was cheap. <laughs> <laughs> He's, I just think of, I think of a brother smart and he's trying to get his shit together. He's like, I don't want this shit. No, I'm here for that. What do you think? Uh, I'm fucking these gangsters out here. Yeah. No. <laughs> Athletes. <laughs> Hello, business owners. Okay. No gangsters. Right. I'm, I'm scared. I had somebody ask me to hold something in my house the other day. I'm like, uh, no. 
if it ain't going in your house, it ain't going in my house. Yeah. My apartment is my father's name. <laughs> Can you imagine? I was like, no, sir. <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> oh. You ain't gonna do it? No. <laughs> I'm not putting myself at risk for no dick. Hell no. You broke the. Never mind. <laughs> no, never mind. I broke what? Oh, no, no, you're, no, I know. You, yeah, yeah, you, <laughs> that was shit. my first mistake. Yeah, yeah. You, are, you almost died. I, 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 I ain't gonna say nothing. Yeah, people. <laughs> that, that, that was the old day. That was, yeah, that was that old day, yeah. That's right. Glad to have you here, though. Me never, too. Never a dull moment with you. Never. 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 What a two year old. I know. I know two of us together. <laughs> I'm just fucking with y'all, man. We just uh, y'all know how it is. We agree to disagree. I feel like this would have just been a, just a regular old review if Danielle hadn't been here. Just, just something about her just sets you off. It, no, it, she always sets me off. It's my no. job. <laughs> and that, and that, why they pay me. You're you're an agent of chaos. <laughs> well, and the chat knows how we are, uh, man. The chat knows that we fuck with each other. You know, I ain't, y'all man, listen. Y'all know me. You know. That's why, yeah, you know we're going to be screaming and fussing with each other. We want to be entertained. I mean, we're like, well, it was a good movie. Yeah, Yeah. Like, come on. Get some passion, okay? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And when it's done, we're going to be good. Y'all know that. You probably be like, let's fuck it. Let's watch Billy again and smoke a blunt. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? <laughs> maybe, I, maybe, we, maybe we need to give another shot. Like, man, I was wrong about that movie. <laughs> that shit cool. That shit cool. Downloads you, the soundtrack. You, gotta, you, you just got to watch it the right way. <laughs> well, shit, bitch. Why didn't you say so? <laughs> DMX is dropping some knowledge. It's oh. all right there. Oh, this shit makes sense now. Yeah. <laughs> You know you are the voice of black people. <laughs> Never. No. Why didn't you say so? Daniel, you was right. I'd have, you know me better than I know myself. <laughs> Should have been listening to you all along. <laughs> people got to know you be hyping shit up for the camera. I do. You got to no, know, you guys. Half the shit he says about me, he's hyping up. He's super nice to me off camera. I promise you he's not like this. God damn, why are you spoiling shit? <laughs> And don't pull back the curtain. <laughs> I we're gonna get that because people are like, spoiler. why do you deal with him? Why do you let him talk to you like that? I'm like, it's a TV show. Hello? <laughs> she, that bitch is lying. Don't y'all listen to her. <laughs> she ain't shit. <laughs> she don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> she thinks she know black people. She don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> let it go. Let it go to check. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> I love when people get crazy, too. Because I know half of them white, and they come in, nigga, calm down. <laughs> I, I normally don't say this, but. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, calm down. Austin, nigga. <laughs> <No. laughs> 